Hello, grown-ups of my students. Welcome to 8th grade environmental science. This is my 80th take. I am so excited to teach them. I have taught some of them before. I have watched many of them grow through the middle school, and some of them are brand new to me, and I cannot wait to get to know them as people and what kind of learners they are. And pretty sure that this video is just to let you know that I'm a real person and that I am excited and passionate about science and hopefully I can convey all of that to you. So let's get started. Let's just do it. Let's go. So the beautiful thing about GFS is similar to many of our courses. It is not taught in isolation. It's taught by a team. And in this case, this is the team, Gregor and Jessa. And <laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful thing that we have an opportunity to work together because we can bounce ideas off of each other. Gregor brings this incredible level of organization and scaffolding, and I bring uh, this very intense passion for science and uh, field work, previous field work that I've done. We have a really wonderful working relationship. So Gregor taught many of the students in seventh grade, and he can share learning profiles and tips and tricks about what works best for for your students so that is one of the wonderful benefits of working in a school or a team like this so i've been a teacher at gfs for 12 years before i was at gfs i taught at radnor middle in their watershed program if i've had the pleasure of teaching a sibling some of you know this about me but i worked for many years as a marine biologist and so i have done extensive field work with primarily oysters and sea turtles. So my goal over the last 12 years has been to implement lots and lots of field studies. It's harder this year, as with all things, um, but we're still going to try. I also like to fish, and I also like to camp, and I love to go to Hickory Run with the sixth graders. And I also would love to audition for the show Survivor someday, but based on how awkward it feels to be talking on this, I'm a uh, reconsider that life goal. All right, very quickly curriculum overview. You know, this year in particular, we really needed to narrow topics down. So we said, all right, what what are the things that are the most important for students to take out of this year? What are the skills we want to build? And what are the topics that they need to know about the most? And so what we actually did was we pared down quite a bit of the content um, to make it much more in-depth, which we've already started. Maybe some of your students have talked about our ecospheres um, that we've built in class. So this was born out of wanting every student to have their own system to observe, whereas, you know, typically when we do the carbon cycle lab or we do a photosynthesis lab, which are really classic eighth grade environmental science labs, um, I wanted students to be able to have something that they could have some ownership over and observe themselves. And so the idea was that every student build one of these ecospheres and we can observe weekly changes and we can actually perform labs on them. So rather than trying to hand out and then sanitize test tubes for every student, um, we're just going to be pulling out our ecospheres and saying, all right, well, let's Let's see if we can measure the oxygen bubble and, and what does that mean in terms of photosynthesis? Or what if we put these in the dark and we you know, starve them of light? Or how would we measure the carbon dioxide output of these so that we could see if there was some kind of complete cycle happening in here? Um, we can do nitrate testing, we can do dissolved oxygen levels. There's a lot that we can do with these little mini ecosystems. Some of them are doing so phenomenally, which I'm so excited about. Can you see this? Right there. There's a little shrimp. He's so happy. So cool. The Charlie Raven. This ecosystem is incredible. It is like picked just the exact right um, percentage of grasses. He has this like really beautiful functioning complete cycle of oxygen and carbon dioxide and nitrates and phosphates. It's it's a perfect ecosystem. Ooh, I think the snail. I think the snail is not making it, but it's okay because we're gonna study decomposition so that we can talk about that. Of course, just because it is such a pertinent um, an important topic to cover. We will really deep dive into climate change. We will do the sort of classic science. We will uh, 
really know the carbon cycle. So I think if everyone really understood the carbon cycle, there would be a lot less confusion. <laughs> so once we have a really, really strong understanding of the science behind climate change, then we can take that information and we can get into some of those larger issues that the students are hearing about and talking about and it's on the news and it's, you know, on their Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, something feeds and, um, you know, have an opportunity to really evaluate what's going on. We can talk about this social justice aspect of climate change and who's being disproportionately affected. We can talk about some of the p political ideals. We can talk about the policies that are in place now and what policies have been in place in the past. We can talk about the Paris Accord. So all of that will come once we have a really strong scientific understanding of these basic principles. Um, we will then go into energy production and use. We'll talk about nuclear power. We'll talk about alternative energies. We'll build wind turbines. And that will take us into population dynamics. So, you know, like I said, instead of, you know, being a, a mile wide and an inch deep, we are choosing to study, on, to focus on human population dynamics this year. So looking at um, the demographic transition of populations of various countries and cultures, looking at the strain that various populations have on our Earth's resources, and that will take us into a conversation about food. We drop our textbook, we read Michael Pollan's book, The Omnivore's Dilemma, which hopefully by then I will have instilled some sense of critical eye in the students, and I don't think it's a perfect book. Um, I certainly don't teach it as the um, end-all and be-all of food science or food production. It's definitely a, a great place to start for conversation. Since I have many more things to say, um, I've been working on building a class website. All right, so this website is designed to be a supplement for our coursework and for Google Classroom. It's not a requirement to visit, but if it is helpful for you to take a look and see what are our areas of study, you could go to each of these and click on and say, oh, what are you studying when you cover matter cycling? So as we build our coursework, this website will become more comprehensive, but if you just uh, take a look at some of, the, some of the topics, you can get deeper into it. So, um, you know, our study of matter cycling, biogeochemical cycles, um, you know, what do we do with all of our stuff? So you could even go to this section and read my teaching philosophy if you, you could do it. You could go here and you could read all about it um, and see what's going on. I also have, um, I also have a, a, a contact page that, to make it easier for you to send me an email to access any of the um, science media accounts so youtube channel they're set to gfs only so um any of those videos and you know anytime that we have remote labs um they would be posted through here um and then some contacts so you are welcome to explore so that is what i have for you i wish i could give you so much more i also Wish I could answer some questions that you might have right now, but I can't because it's a video. Thank you so much for watching this probably way too long video, but I just have so much to share and so much to say. And hopefully you have seen now that I am a real person and then I have a deep love and excitement for science and I'm going to share that and I'm going to share it with the small people that you live with. They're going to love it. They're going to love science. So, goodbye from this dead snail.